Well, it is the 17th of August. It is uh, two hours and 18 minutes into the day. Uh, things are really shaping up. Uh, the uh, it, it, As you get closer and closer to September, the projects start to pile up in terms of what's going to happen in September. And uh, this is what's happening now. Things are starting to fall into place. Uh, there's more and more of a direction. There's still an enormous amount of work to get done because this is this is the starting point in September that will take you all the way into uh, basically December. Uh, December is where you sit back, you reorganize your notes, you look at what you've done so far, uh, and that prepares you for fe for for February when you restart again and you move forward to well May again. Uh, so we we do have a pattern. We do have a. Uh, a direction here now, so it's no longer uh, it's sort of sitting in the middle. Uh, there are other things that sort of have to be worked on. It really depends on the environment you're going into in terms of how things are going to shape up. And this is sort of uh, looking at what's going to what the, what the global situation is like because uh, I will be getting involved in the global situation uh, because there are elements in there. And there are ways that you can sort of participate. And this was, has to do with QLARP. Uh, QLARP is the live action role play. But you, because, it's, because it's a James Bond type of scenario, it's sort of uh, it's an intelligence type of scenario, you can indeed play this for real, and so you can sort of find ways of sort of stepping into the role uh, that, you've that you've decided to play and do some good, uh, and taking your nerd skills, if you will, uh, uh, the ability to study and sort of take them into the analyst role and provide some analysis that would be good for everybody. So uh, that's the key is you want to steer, steer people in the better direction and the best direction that would help everybody out. Uh, there are certain key people you need to sort of get at, uh, but there's no way of knowing who and how they're going to, how the information is going to get to them. You know of my experience how your information evolves, how grows, whether or not you're hitting on the right track or not. Uh, if you're being blocked, if you're being stopped, then you're not on the right track because you're being stopped and being blocked. You've got to get that information out there, uh, regardless of, of, of uh, you know, being the hero, being the savior. If you stand up and you rant and rave and sort of oppose things, but then the information never gets out, then you've actually done nothing because... Uh, the information that needed to get out doesn't get out. Uh, and so this is where you bring in things like, you know, it, it's it's type of a data analysis, but that's not, see, there are a number of forms of data analysis. Uh, and it's, it has to do with the sampling, how you sample your data. Uh, a lot of people will do what we call serial sampling, where there's one thing after another. But there's also a distributed sampling where instead of being vertical and only looking at one point in the spectrum, you go across. So you don't go as deep into the vertical as, as you would for, like, call, call the ser for, for the serial uh, data sampling. What you do is, in, in terms of a sped spectrum or, or, or a distributed one, you go shallow, but because you're covering more points of the spectrum, you get a better understand. In other words, you're looking at more points of view. You get a better sense for what's actually going on. But the thing is, you can't go back to a data scientist and explain this to her, explain this to him because uh, they just simply don't understand that level of thinking. They don't. They, their view is primarily serial. You get you, you just uh, sort of A, B, C, D, and E, and they all kind of line up. They're kind of all in the same area, and this will sort of gives you your points. This has to. Uh, this gives you a lot of false data because you're only looking at one particular area. You have to ask yourself how the data emerges. And so there is this question of data. And then the thing is how the data emerges. And once you do have a picture, well, then how do you present it, particularly if there are other people out there trying to knock you off, they're trying to hide your data because they don't want it seen. Because they, well, other, other scientists don't want ne negative data seen because it's going to cost them their job. They owe this, this guy here, he came up with this set of data. Uh, you know, it, it, why isn't yours like this? And he's explaining a lot more. You know, uh, you want more funding? Well, you gotta get, you gotta, you gotta get on the ball. 
or otherwise, you know, they lose their jobs. They they, they lose their funding. And of course, no researcher wants that. Uh, uh, and so they will shift their data, they will adjust their data uh, to meet whatever the funder wants. So, the, yeah, the funder is getting what he pays for because he's paying for that particular research, but he's not getting the truth. And this is why my funding goes into a blind trust, and I pull from that trust. Uh, uh, and, and what I mean by blind trust, it... it, it you don't you don't donate to something specific. It goes into one pool, and the and, and the pool funds a number of different things because in many ways these things are all interrelated anyway. So if I'm if I'm investing in a phone, uh, upgrading my equipment, that phone is acting like a laptop, like acting like a device. It can be used for a number of different projects, including uh, products that other people may want funded or not funded. It, it, it really depends on. On how you leverage again, how you leverage your equipment. Uh, if you're properly distrib you distribute you distribute the load of work across your equipment, and this is why you have multiple devices, and this is why I have multiple de devices. Is that I distribute the workload across multiple devices. So this is doing filming, that's doing a lot of the editing. Uh, I have an, I have this one here. This is waterproof, so it does uh, filming outdoors. I have a GoPro on uh, my scooter, so that does the filming for there. Uh, so in other words, you have a, a way of uh, making sure that the workload doesn't doesn't get too heavy. And so I have I also have two more tablets here uh, that will contain the notebooks and will contain the, the larger structure of things, so that you can sit down and organize the notes in a larger format. Right now, this one is uh, approaching full again because I've got a lot of notes in there. And I have to offload, and then I have to go back and sort of readjust them in the bigger in the bigger de uh, device uh, to uh, sort of organize where the notes are, what they're about, and how to sort of uh, how they interrelate in terms of if there's a reference or a cross reference to this. So this is the mechanism. Uh, I just now finished watching uh, 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 Family uh, Forever vlogs. Uh, forever family vlog. It used to be uh, Sisters Forever. Uh, they've changed it since then, for for a while now. Uh, I got I behind. I'm behind on that. So I'm catching up, and right now I'm going off to. Is it, this is a transition point. I'm going off to um, do some gaming, and then probably to bed because I'm just right now at this point. I'm a little wiped out. Well, it is uh, 15 hours and 21 minutes into the 18th day of uh, August, 2021, and we're tra transitioning uh, into the next part of our day. Uh, I was supposed to vlog at the last transition, but things kind of fell off, and it just didn't occur. I was kind of in a, a bizarre state. I get, every couple of days, I get into these... Uh, stays in almost extreme fatigue and there's no other option but to go back to bed and the times when you transition back and forth aren't necessarily predictable so anyways I am here I'm gonna have uh, some breakfast I have another set of uh, clover chips these are the barbecue ones these are tapioca and corn uh, um, uh, at the, uh, Sister Forever Vlog, mm, the Sister Forever Vlog, oh man, my, I'm still not speaking right, <laughs> I haven't woken up enough yet, uh, so I am on the, uh, uh, YouTube stroll, Yellow Vlogs hasn't posted anything yet, they'll probably post later on tonight, um, I'm gonna try to do a bit of binge watching here at Sisters Forever, uh, because I am behind, I do, I do have to do some binge watching, so, uh, that's going to be on the schedule currently. I did my perusal uh, around the internet in terms of my various different, uh, HULARP sources. I am considering at this point in time, because of the amount of time that it takes... Ending uh, Lord's Mobile, uh, ending that so I can move uh, further into QLARP. 
Uh, it's just, Laura's Mobile takes up an enormous amount of time. A lot of these gaming things take an enormous, enormous amount of time. Uh, and that's what happened last night. What, what, oh, I dropped everything to move to more Lord's Mobile because Lord's Mobile was so intense. Uh, it required its own schedule. Uh, you have to, you have to schedule your day around Lord's Mobile. And I'd rather, and, and because things are starting to pick up, I'd rather put the stuff into the game QLARP, uh, which sits in reality. I would move out of the simulation into reality in terms of my, my LARPing. Uh, I would rather do that than stay within the game of uh, Lord's Mobile. Uh, but I'll see how things go this week. Uh, I'm, I'll make the determination by the end of the week uh, of what I'm going to do. Uh, and then uh, that will be set, or sort of set me up for September going back to school. I'll probably be out of Lord's Mobile by then uh, and heading further into QLARP. Uh, Situations are evolving on the ground. There are things that have to be discussed. There are things that have to be examined. And that's why I'm doing more of my perusing of my sources. Uh, uh, some of my QLOP sources, I keep most of my QLOP sources quiet. I don't talk about the in terms of which, who they are or what they are. Uh, because information is sensitive. And some of it will, repeat, will disappear. Ugh. So it's a matter, right now it's just a matter of observing the information, noting it down, keeping a record of it, and then it's all, right now it's, it's primarily library work. And this is what observation does as well. You go outside, you do your observation, you take your notes, and at some point in time you come back in and uh, we, once you've been out there enough and you've got enough information, you start to reorganize what you're doing and... Uh, it gives you a new perspective in terms of how you're going to do your observation. So this is kind of the way it works. So QLARP will come more into reality uh, as uh, Lord's Mobile fades. Uh, and this can be done back here even while, while I'm doing the, uh, the uh, YouTube stroll. I can be working on QLARP because I've got a lot of different devices here. So I don't have to be just simply watching TV or watching what's going on, although watching what's going on in the vlogs, looking at the personalis still does involve a, a good amount of observation, uh, as well uh, as well as being entertaining and enjoying, you know, enjoyable. Uh, anyways, I think that's enough for now, and because I will be coming back later on, hopefully, uh, maybe in other places as well, as well, and I'll try to uh, set up other cameras, because I do have have the ability to do that. So anyways, uh, see you um, whenever. <laughs> well, it's just about 2 o'clock in the morning on the 19th. Yeah, it's 1 hour and 53 minutes into the 19th day of uh, August uh, 2021. And we're somewhat doing a transition vlog. But we're basically at uh, doing the YouTube stroll. Did an extended one after coming in from doing observations outside. Uh, I came in around 12.30. Uh, and just sort of sat here and w had something to eat. Watched some, tea, watched some of my vlogs on the YouTube stroll. And now I'm off to do some gaming. And make some difficult decisions as to how long I'm going to keep up with Lord's Mobile. Uh... The next level I have to get to the Lord's Mobile is a long task. It is doable for free-to-play players, but it is a very daunting task as well. And with QLARP picking up in terms of the activities, uh, I'm wondering if it's wise to continue with Lord's Mobile. Uh, I'll uh, probably uh, do this for another week or so. And make my decision uh, by September 1st as to whether or not I'm going to stay with Laura's Mobile or not. So, uh, we'll see uh, what happens. So, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to go off to do some gaming. I'll come back and watch a little bit more of the YouTube stroll. The, I have uh, I just finished the Leroy's. Uh, I do have to go over Our Family Nest. And uh, there's a couple others that I still have to go by to sort of see and say hello to and... Uh, so on and so forth. So, 
Uh, we'll see what ends up happening uh, after I do the gaming. Well, I just got back from a uh, Lord's Mobile gaming session. Uh, yeah, it took about uh, uh, an hour. This is the this is the thing. These gaming sessions, these games, uh, particularly once you get up into the nerdy level, uh, they take a long time to play. They're not short, and so you do have to have a you know, a certain amount of dedication to everything. And if you don't have that dedication, then well, you're not going to do well. Uh, being a free to play free to play player. Uh, means you're not uh, using the power-ups that you can purchase that other people would purchase. You have to find other means. There's longer waits. There's you know you have to be more patient. And this is what makes uh, Lords Mobile so much like a real like, like the real thing is that a lot of times the events that occur on the ground do not occur very quickly, even though there appears to be at certain times very quick and rapid movement. There isn't. I mean, Lionel is talking about, you know, the collapse of Afghanistan and how bad Biden is doing this so horrible thing. This is, uh, you know, playing into the whole thing. This is Saigon 2.0 and so on and so forth. But uh, understand who the Taliban are. Uh, they were a group of, uh, a, 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 a freedom fighter group created in the 80s by the United States, by the CIA. They were funded through Pakistan. Uh, and through the U.S. government, uh, that's the, the, and they were there to fight the Soviets, to, to, to harass the Soviets. This was part of the Cold War. And so what happens is that, oh, how do they, why, why, are they, why are they leaving all this weaponry behind? Well, it's very simple, because that's how, how else do you supply these groups who are supposedly your enemy with weapons? And, and the thing is, most Americans don't understand this. We're not fighting enemies, we're fighting ourselves. The enemies that, that we are fighting are the enemies that we created. This is perfectly Machiavellian. This is well within history. That the, these things that, that the, you create this boogeyman to create fear in society, just like uh, CVD, the current panic that's going on. You create fear to control, control people. That's what it's about. How do you control your people? Create fear. Create an enemy. Create something that has to be fought. And you've now got the loyalty of your people. They're not. They're going to follow you without any particular question. And this is what's occurring now. But most people can't see that. But why? Because they're not patient enough. These things are long-term games. I mean, was watching Lionel in the you know throughout going into the election when he was supporting Donald Trump. He couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle the stress. So this is why he and a lot of others remain pundits because they can't handle the heat. Uh, when you start getting into the situation that like, like Trump had gotten into and stuff like that, you can't handle it. It's not that Trump did an amazing job. It just what happened was that the job is extremely tough because you have to deal with a lot of different players. And it really depends on the, the cards that you're, you're handed. That's going to determine how well you do. And the fact that, that Trump survived the four years was truly amazing because there were a lot of people out there who wanted him dead. So he survived. He got out alive. That's success. Uh, about uh, Georgia and these other losses in the Senate uh, from the Republicans, well, cause we see what's happening now. The Republicans have been doing nothing. Most of the people understand this. Most of the people understood, understood that the, the Republicans weren't worth voting for. Uh, if Donald Trump wasn't there, so they tossed over Donald Trump. They, everyone saw this. Everyone, from what I was seeing on on, on Twitter and TikTok and so on, so on, before they started banning everybody, uh, their whole thing was, why weren't the Republicans supporting Donald Trump in terms of the uh, in terms of the voter count? And they weren't. They 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 they, they, they screwed everybody over. And so the whole thing wasn't Donald Trump didn't show up. It was the fact that. They began to realize the Republicans weren't in it for the Republicans. They're in it, they're, they were throwing everything to the Democrats. So they said, well, why vote for these people? And there's no argument that Trump could have made that sort of said, oh, we have to vote for them. Because everyone had saw that these people were, were screwing everybody over. They didn't care. So they didn't care about uh, supporting democracy. They didn't care about supporting Donald Trump. I mean, they, the guy went, the, Donald Trump went into the election winning the election. 
He went into that night winning the election. They shut everything down. Everyone went home. And all of a sudden, we come back the next day. All of a sudden, he's lost. Because millions of votes in the middle of the night have showed up. Past the, the, past the, the, the typical deadline for counting. Now, if you don't call that funny, but I think it's the same thing. Biden wasn't the one who, who, was, who was elected. The Democrats accepted Biden after they were told they can't have Bernie. Everyone, everyone most of the Democrats I knew, the ones I talked to, all wanted Bernie Sanders. When they were told they can't have Bernie Sanders, and they would only have Biden, that's when they all sort of saying Biden. And, it was, and the whole thing was anyone but Trump. That was the whole, the whole issue. And this is kind of, you know, you, 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 you have to understand that there are people out there who don't think. A lot of people don't think. You see this in cartoon after cartoon after cartoon when they're running, running for class president or class representative or whatever they want running for. And the ones who are very serious and want to get on the issues never win. It's always the one who are popular, the one who sort of becomes part of the people. They're the ones who win, regardless of their of, of their actual intentions as when they're in office or not or not. So, in other words, the issues never really matter to the people because they don't even think about it. What matters to the people is that they that, that they like the person that they're electing. That's it. That's it's about likability, and that's it. It's a show. One hour left of the, of the uh, 19th of, uh, of August. It is 23 hours into the day, so literally less than an hour left. But we are vlogging. We started the YouTube stroll. Uh, not too sure how I'm feeling. Uh, but as, it's, as I said before, we are living in the midst of a panic. I did finish. I did watch Lionel. Uh, well, listen to Lionel. Uh, what I was sitting outside doing my observational work. Um, he tries to do these analogies, but a lot of times he fails at the ana he fails at the analogy, and this ha eh, this happens. A lot of times, and when you bring up an analogy, an example that's supposed to reflect on the point that you're trying to make. Other points often pop up in between that push you off onto a tangent, onto another track, another point. Uh, this is what happens with Lionel. He gets off track, he gets onto another tangent. Not that the tangent is invalid, it's just, it just on another, ta another, ta another tangent just doesn't finish. And I think I said, yeah, he's right, the patient is dead. You know, the United States is dead. It, it's in the process of of dying, and it, it, it is not that, that that it wants to know that it's dying. It wants to, it, 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 in terms of trying to heal itself, uh, it's in the process of committing suicide. And this, this is this is Dostoevsky, but he doesn't make the connection between Dostoevsky uh, humanism and well, in, in communism. Uh, but the thing is, Dostoevsky does that. He, he makes these sort of connections. And you can actually go back and follow the Dostoevsky path to H.G. Uh, Wells, and from there you go to H.G. Wells. Uh, well, from H.G. Wells you go to the London School of Economics. And begin to see how a lot of this actually evolves. And you get to see where the Clinton group comes out of. Because they come out of the London School of Economics. This is why a large chunk of their their economic advisors are actually from England, is it picks off of the London School uh, of Economics in terms of its uh, the Democrats' uh, understanding of things. So they are part of the Fabian Society. There, there, there is a huge a sort of interconnected network that should be looked at. It's not that everyone was involved in it. And again, the, 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 there is no overarching conspiracy. It's just what happens is that a lot of times you have, and this is what we're sort of seeing here on the vlog, that people have a chance to stand up and say something. They want to be included in the current conversation, the current topic. 
whether or not it's going to be something significant or not, it doesn't matter as long as they're mentioned. And there's a lot of sort of playing up for the camera to make uh, even the vlogs somewhat entertaining. Because the vlog is this, is this, it's the conversation. If the conversation isn't there, then uh, what else are you going to do? <laughs> so, uh, this is the kind of the way things go. And anyway, I'm, I'm going to be heading off to the uh, game, to do the gaming right now. Uh, I'm going to do the gaming for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and sort of then pop off from there. Uh... I'm still feeling very fatigued for the day, so I don't know how things are going to go. But this is the way they are, and so you, you, you push on from here. Uh, so I'll see you in a bit.